all the other high-performance operating systems have been knocked out. Only Ike's, IBM's units, remains with six supercomputers to its credit. Windows? Solaris. Their history. There's nothing shocking about that. What is surprising is that China's supercomputer growth has exploded. According to the Top 500 organization, China nearly tripled the number of systems on the latest list, while the number of systems in the United States has fallen to the lowest point since the Top 500 list was created in 1993. China is also carving out a bigger share as a manufacturer of high-performance computers with multiple Chinese manufacturers becoming more active in this field. Specifically, China has leaped to 109 systems, from the 37 it boasted on the previous top 500 list. The United States still has the overall lead with 200 of the fastest supercomputers. However, that's down down from 231 in July. Worse still, it's the U.S.S. lowest number since the top 500 list was created in 1993. Elsewhere, Europe has fallen to 108 systems compared to 141 earlier this year. Japan's share has dropped slightly from 40 to 36 systems. At the same time, China's computer vendors are becoming leaders in high-performance computers HPC. Lenovo, following its acquisition of IBM's x86 server business in 2014, is now up to 25 top 500 systems from just three systems on the July 2015 list. Some systems that were previously listed as IBM are now joined IBM slash Lenovo Productions and Lenovo slash IBM 5 systems. Eventually, as the last of the contracts behind these supercomputers end, they'll go to Lenovo's count. Sugon, a Chinese HPC and server vendor that's relatively unknown in the West, has overtaken IBM with 49 systems. Overall, Hewlett Packard Enterprise HPE with 136 supercomputers, is the leading HPC vendor. It's followed by Crate, 69, and Sugon. At the very top of the list, and for the sixth straight time, Tian 2, a supercomputer developed by China's National University of Defense Technology, is the world's fastest computer. This time around it scored 33.86 petaflop s quadrillions of calculations per second per p-flop s on the Linpac benchmark. Holding on to the number two spot, Titan, the Crate XK7 system installed at Doe's Oak Ridge National Laboratory, is the top U.S. system. It scored 17.59 petaflop slash s. In other words, Tian 2 remains much faster than it. There are only two new systems in the top 10. The first, at number 6, is the Trinity supercomputer. It was built by Crave and is jointly deployed by the Department of Energy's Doe Los Alamos and Sandia National Laboratories. In the number 8 spot, there's Crave's Hazel Hen system. It's installed at Germany's HLR Supercomputer Center. Crave, long synonymous with supercomputers, is on comeback trial. In terms of pure performance, Crave systems now claim 24.9% share of installed total performance. That's up from 24%. While IBM has far fewer systems, the ones that it has left took second place with a 14.9% share. HPE, even though it easily has the most top 500 supercomputers, has 12.9% of the overall performance power. This places HP in third place. Overall, supercomputer performance is slowing down. The last place system's performance had grown by only 55%. That sounds impressive, but it pales compared to 1994 to 2008's annual 90% growth rate. Technically, supercomputers are increasingly using accelerator-slash-coprocessor technology to boost performance. 104 systems on the top 500, up from 90 in July 2015, are now relying on this floating point technology. 66 of these use NVIDIA chips, 3 use ADI Radiant, and 27 systems work with Intel's Exeon 5 processors. Four systems use a combination of NVIDIA and Intel Exeon 5 accelerators-slash-coprocessors. What to make of all this? Well, there's no question about it. Linux rules supercomputing. But, that's old news. What's interesting, and disturbing, if you're interested in the U.S. remaining a high technology leader is that we're declining. And, with IBM now moving out of supercomputers, 
it appears that fall from supercomputing power will only continue. Within two years it seems all too likely that China will be the top supercomputing country.